Oh, uh, he only cares about Build Devout now. He's never gonna do the giant gearbox video. I bet you feel real dumb right now. Giant gearbox video coming. But it takes me a while sometimes because I'm a one man show over here. So just chill out. This is gonna be cool. It's gonna be very educational. Build Devout is all new, redesigned in version two. Forget everything that you thought you knew about stackable, modular, free, open source, vertical axis wind turbines. That's how big this update is. Biggest thing by far, there is now support for a NEMA 17 stepper motor mount. These are those motors that are used really commonly in 3D printers, so I figured that's the best chance of the motor that you're going to have lying around, so that's the one that I did first. I was going to design a part to support the 28BYJ48 stepper motor, since I know a lot of people have those and they're much cheaper, but those kind of suck to use as generators because they're so hardcore geared on the inside. They're geared 1 to 63, so you need gearing on the outside to even make them usable. And I mean, at that point, it's just buy a different motor. That's sort of a theme of this update. There are several things in this update where I kind of just had to say deal with it rather than having the option to infinitely customize everything. The motor is obviously a big one because everybody has different motors, but I'm hoping that because this project is open source, if there is a big call or a niche community or something that wants a different size motor mount, hopefully that's something that you guys can work out together if I don't have enough time. The male end of all gears has been removed. Originally, I wanted this to be like infinitely adaptable. I wanted you to be able to do everything or anything. If you wanted gears in the middle of the wind turbine, so have it or so be it or whatever. But I figured that for the gears, if you're going to be putting a gear, that's like the end of the rotation because that's where it meets the stepper motor. And I designed the motor mount and the motor mount goes at the bottom. You know what I mean? So it's okay, there's nothing else that's gonna be going beyond there. Plus the male side of the gears was interfering. Remember males go down. The male side of the gears was interfering with the gear mount. It would make it so that it would lock up and not spin. So I figured we'll just, we'll just remove those. Speaking of gears, all of the gears have been redesigned and they now have a very specific profile taken out of them. And the reason is because they, we need to be able to fit this part right here. This part is cool because now now, all of the gears, this is one of the old gears, just by the way, has male ends. Those don't exist anymore. Well, anyway, because male ends go down and it would be facing this way, I guess this is anatomically incorrect because technically the hole would be on the other side. But this part fits into the gear like so, and it can convert any of the gears from the drive shaft, meaning the, the gears that go on your wind turbine, to a gear that goes on the generator. Because obviously, I posted an Instagram reel about this, the, these need to be able to fit bearings, which need an eight millimeter hole in the inside, right? But the stepper motor has a specific shape of shaft that it has to be able to fit. And so the stepper motor shaft is in this profile and you can slide that one into this one. This effectively saves half of all the plastic that you would have otherwise spent printing gears because now you can just convert any gear when you need it to be able to be a stepper motor. So I figured this will probably, this piece will probably just sit on your stepper motor always. And you can just, you know, pop different gears onto it and off of it as needed. And that's kind of sweet because then you can change these, I called it hot swap gear changing, not because it's actually hot swap or there's anything hot, but I just thought it sounded cool. So that should make it very easy for you to be able to swap up gear ratios. If there's a windy day, a less windy day, it'll make it a little bit easier. A small fix, nose cones were upside down before, they are not now. I also changed the gears such that the bearing used to be at the top of the gear profile and now it is at the bottom so that when you have a bearing inside of the gear, that can be the lowest most thing and that can be right there rubbing against your motor mount. Well, not rubbing against it. So you'll put a washer between the gear and the motor mount and then that will be able to spin freely on top of it. The problem before was that the gear was hanging down below and then it was you'd have to add like five washers or something to get it to fit. So now you don't have to do that, you're welcome. Another small gear thing that I forgot, originally the, the first build out update had three gears. It was a 20, a 24 and a 30 tooth gear. Now there's also a 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80. So between the 20 and the 80 tooth gears, the maximum gear ratio you're gonna be able to have is a one to four or four to one, depending. Although you'd have to have a really tall build of out to do a one to four gear ratio. But if you do it, send it to me, because that, that's that would be sweet. But anyway, along the theme of, I just kind of had to make some decisions for you because otherwise it would be too complicated. Here's, here's my official statement, okay? If you need more than a four to one gear ratio, just use the plastic that you would otherwise spend on an enormous gear to print more build about parts. It's kind of hard to say, build about. Build about. There's no right way to say it, it's an acronym. Okay, so looking at the motor mount here, this you're gonna need two pretty long bolts for. The longer the bolts, the more of a variation in distance you're going to be able to have between your motor and the shaft of your build about. There's a piece that I created, I think it's nomenclature in the files is thumb screw. That's an optional piece. I kind of just didn't want to deal with it, but you can put that in there if you want. 
couple other changes. With version 2 comes a whole lot of new parts. We had a lot of people say that they didn't like to have to print so many different small pieces. They wanted to print just one or two big ones. So, point taken. I've made several 200 millimeter and 280 millimeter pieces, which are just chunky guys. So for those of you that don't care about color scheme, that will be good for you. Also, I know everybody's gonna have a different mounting setup, so I added one more motor mount that the idea was to have a big flush bottom base with some little wings on the side. So that way, if you want to drill some like self-tapping screws in there and you can attach it to a wall or a piece of wood or something, or if you live in an apartment like me and they won't let you drill anything, then you can just put some really sticky double-sided foam tape on the bottom of that and hopefully that should be good enough. The motor mount has one place where there's a countersunk nut hole in it. You want that to be facing up so that the nut doesn't interfere. You want it to be flush, right? So that you're going to put a bearing over that and then that's where your rotor for your wind turbine is going to be. So just remember before you get it all set up that the countersunk nut goes up. I fixed a little tolerance issue as well that caused some of the pieces to have little gaps between them more than they should. Both the female and the male parts of the joint were about 50 micrometers off, so now that I fixed them, they mesh together quite a bit better. I've said before that I don't want to make it such that gluing the windmill is a requirement, because I don't like projects that you have to, you know, follow certain required steps for. Gluing will obviously help, but fixing that little tolerance issue will make the glue also less necessary than it was before. As always, thank you very much for watching, I really appreciate it. It's kind of crazy, it's looking more and more like this might become my normal job. Which is weird to even say out loud. I guess I'm a windmill fluencer. Maybe. But anyway, thank you for allowing me to do this and for allowing it to become a source of income for me. I, I, I mean, it'd be sweet if I could do this full time. It's definitely more enjoyable than what I'm doing now. <laughs> I've got a ton of content. I know I say this a lot, but I've got a ton of content planned. Get ready for the Christopher's Factory Renaissance because I'm going to be cranking these things out here pretty soon. Thank you very much for all of you who support me, and I hope you have a wonderful day.